This is an article from the New York Times. Horrible history. Mass grave of indigenous children reported in Canada. An indigenous community says it has found evidence that 215 children were buried on the grounds of a British Columbia school. One of many in Canada set up to forcibly assimilate them. Ottawa. For decades, most indigenous children in Canada were taken from their families and forced into boarding schools. A large number never returned home. Their families given only vague explanations or none at all. Now, an indigenous community in British Columbia says it found evidence of what happened to, to some of its missing children. A mass grave containing the remains of 215 children on the grounds of a former residential school. Chief Roseanne Cat Casimir of the Tekipolis First Nation said on Friday that the ground penetrating radar had discovered the remains near the site of Kamloops Indian Residential School, which operated from 1890 until the late 1970s. It's a harsh reality and it's our truth, it's our history. Chief Casimir said at a news conference, and it's something we always have to fight to prove. For me, it's been a horrible, horrible history. The remains, which Chief Casimir described as many, many years old, decades, included those of children as young as three. Starting in the 19th century, Canada was home to a system of residential schools, mostly operated by churches. The indigenous children were forced to attend. The system went into a decline during the 1970s with the last school closing in, in uh, 1996. A National Truth and Reconciliation Commission set up as part of a government apology and settlement, settlement over the schools concluded that at least 4,100 students died while attending the schools, many from mistreatment or neglect, others from disease or accident. It found that in many cases, families never learned the fate of their offspring, who are now known as the missing children. While there have been long rumors of unmarked graves at schools and the findings in a preliminary report presented to the First Nation this week are confirmed, it will be the first time a major burial site has been discovered. Thank you so much for sharing that the pain that such news causes reminds us, reminds us of our ongoing need to bring light to every tragic situation that occurred in residential schools run by the church Archbishop Jake J Michael Miller of the Vancouver Ar Archdiocese said in a statement the passage of time does not erase the suffering unlike other, other religious groups that operated the residential schools the Catholic Church has refused to formally apologize for abuses that occurred within them. Pause there. Let me get Deuteronomy 28 and 45, and I want you to read 47. So this is what we're facing as a people. We live in what is called a post-racial society while these people trample on your ancestors' bones and hide the bodies of your children. Right? Smile in your face every day and tell you it's equal opportunity when they still won't even confess to the atrocities that they committed against you let alone the one that they already committed, that you already know about, that they refuse to pay restitution for. But this Bible told us that these things were going to happen to us and our people thousands of years ago if we didn't heed the words of the Most High God. That's right. We think that this Bible was a white man's book, but it tells us that black is beautiful when they want to tell us that black is ugly. Proof that it's, it's not even in alignment with what his beliefs are. But what happens is when you estrange yourself from your history, they can weaponize it against you. They can tell you that you're uncivilized, but you were really far more civil than they ever were. That's right. When they climbed out of the caves that they came from, right? Let me get that in Deuteronomy. See, not only are these bodies hidden to this day, but they still hunt our steps to this day. That's right. And the scriptures told us that this was going to happen. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 45. Same. Moreover, Same. all these curses shall come upon thee. All these what? All these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and over thee. What we're about to tell you today is that us having to be ruled over by this white man, the devil, the Bible speaks of, is a curse. How is it not when he can gun you down in the streets, innocently and unarmed? 
How is it not a curse when he can redline you? When there's a glass ceiling above you everywhere you go and everywhere you try to uh, excel in this so-called society. How is it not a curse that you have to serve and stand next to and be smiled at by the same people that put your ancestors in shackles and continue to hide you in prison houses to this day? How is that not a curse? Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall over, and shall pursue thee, and what? And shall pursue thee. So they would come upon you, they would overtake you, and pursue you. Meaning that there is no level in society that you can climb to or aspire to to escape the affliction that the Most High God has put upon us by the hand of this white man, the devil, the Bible speaks of. And overtake thee till thou be destroyed. And ain't be destroyed as a people drugs on almost every corner that we touch. Right. Households broken apart from right. neighborhood to neighborhood. Ain't be, ain't be destroyed. That's right. Don't know the sun from the moon. Don't know whether we coming or we going. Pimping our brothers and our sisters and killing each other and rapping about it. Divorcing and committing adultery and singing about it and we destroy it. Right. All the while massacres gets to capitalize and make money off of it. All you do is continue to shuck and job in the name of capitalism. Quote unquote, equal opportunity, the land of the free, the home of the brave. They only allow you to speak the truth or speak what you want to speak when it's beneficial to them. But we come out here week in and week out to speak. Medical marijuana? No. We want you to die at the hands of the Most High God. That's right. Yeah, our. That's right. We want justice to be restored in the earth at the hands of the Most High God, Yahweh. But as a people, until we come back to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God, that is not going to happen. See, you don't need to pick up arms. You don't need to pick up no guns. You don't need to pick up no knives. You need to get in this Bible that's been sitting on your dresser collecting dust. That's right. Collecting dust in that church you go to and pay pastor all that money just to not know how to conduct yourself on a day-to-day -day basis according to the word of the Most High God. That's what we need. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 45. Medical marijuana. Right. All a white man want to do is rock your ass back to sleep again. That's right. Sedate you. Subdue you in the mind so that you're not lifting up a hand to do anything. See, when you hide off your ass, you can't, you can't fathom doing any spiritual warfare. You can't even fathom the fact that something is going on more important than your goddamn couch when you hide off your ass all the time. No wonder in these last days, when they're waging war against what's called black identity extremism, they're pushing weed out on every corner and all these stores, encouraging you to get high, encouraging you to shut down your reproductive organs. That's all that happens when you get out of your ass. And that's what they want, because your ass, all you want to do when you're done being depressed at the end of the week is forget about it or not feel it. That's why it's a liquor store in all your neighborhoods, and that's why they put weed shops in all your neighborhoods. That's right. But no matter how high you get, you're not going to be able to escape these curses. This is what the Word of God said. That's right. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall, over, shall pursue thee, and overtake thee, uh -huh. till thou be destroyed. Read to 47 and then skip to 49. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. It's because we did not. Isn't that American? Uh -huh. We out here for you. You are Israelite according to the Bible. Yeah. I know about that. You know about it? All praises to the Most High. We come off the ground. We're calling the buffalo. The bunny. We gotta, we gotta get you back in these laws, statutes, and commandments, man. Because that's the only thing that's going to end this wickedness that's around it. That's the only thing that's going to do it. All I can do is talk to Mr. Magoo. Okay. Hey, you a Christian? Y'all Christians? Come here, let's talk about Jesus Christ and the gospel and the Bible. Y'all don't want to do it. Yeah. Hey, good news ain't for everybody. Hey, people talk to Mr. Magoo on the hill. Mr. Magoo on the hill? Yeah. Hey, we're here for you every week. We got a deal. Yeah, we do it. Right, be careful, brother. Oh, oh. Man, that makes me something out here. Yeah. Like, look at the insanity that the white man drives into. These are curses. It's undeniable. How are we not curse? That's right. It makes no sense. Oh, uh, right. Left off that up. Numbers uh, 42 and 3. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 24. 
who gave Jacob for his spoil and Israel to the robbers? Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. He said, hell say, that's because his daddy, right? His daddy saved I'm glad he understands that. We need to understand that the white man's daddy is saved Verse 25, therefore he had poured, poured upon him the fury of his anger and the strength of battle. And it has set him on fire round about, yet he knew not. We know it now. Why? Because we ignored the clauses that are in his covenant. The ones that told us if we went off, we would pay the penalties. Isn't there penalties in every covenant? If you violate the contract that you signed, you sign up for Team Mobile or your cell phone service, there's penalties. You don't pay your bill. We didn't pay our bill to the most high. We didn't adhere to the covenant, the contract. So he has set us on fire round about. Yet he knew not, and it burned him. Yet he said it's not to heart. I don't know who said it, but I was walking by and, you, and one of you said you guys want to praise the white man. I feel like you, I understand what you guys talked about in the part of the 13 tribes. I get it, I understand where I come from. But, you said 13 tribes. 18 tribes of Judah, isn't it 18 or 13? There's 12 tribes of Israel it's and there's 12. 12 tribes of Judah. Okay, see, I'm not familiar exactly, but I know exactly where I come from. I might not be saying things verbatimly, but if I if I look at my information that I have, I have to constantly try to understand. I think you guys are doing the right thing out here, but to say that people want to praise the white man, I, I get what you guys are trying to say, but I think you should guys tell people that they've been programmed to believe in the white man. You know what I'm saying? Because nobody wants to praise them. It's just what we've been programmed to understand. You know what I'm saying? So, um, what you guys are doing is great, but twice the words can draw or push a white people, you know what I'm saying? And we are perishing for the lack of knowledge. You know what I'm saying? So when you use a statement like that, make sure that you say we have been programmed. We have only been introduced to this. It's time to reprogram it and, and seek who we are, find out where we come from, question everything. That's how I think things should be. Like that, they can really understand the message you guys are trying to deliver. Because the moment people hear white, they're like, okay, we're done. Because it becomes more of a racial thing, it becomes more of a racist thing. And we don't even be like them. You know what I'm saying? We're higher up than them. We're better than them in so many ways. And they need to know that. You know what I'm saying? The choice of words, my brother, is the only thing. Because I went down there and I was thinking, I was like, okay, I don't think anybody really wants to praise my hand. But we know. You know what I'm saying? So that's just my two cents. But I appreciate you guys being out here because it reminds me of what I need to be doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So thank you. May I ask your nationality on your father's side? Uh, he's from, uh, so my mom's from Santiago, my mom's from Nicaragua, uh, Managua, Nicaragua, my dad's from Santiago, Chile. Um, I came here when I was nine months. I'm not from here. I just live out here, but I'm from a whole different country. You know what I'm saying? Um, I do plan on returning back to that country. I do not want to retire here because this country is going to shit, unfortunately. We're being misled and there's a systematic approach of oppression that's been here from the beginning of time before you and I. And I'm aware of that, so I've been preparing myself mentally, spiritually, financially to kind of detach from this place, you know? Because my parents, even though they brought us here, they're American citizens, they went back and left us here. You know what I'm saying? So that's my goal in life. So that's my goal in life to go back where I came from, not to stay here. I agree with you. You know? So what I want to do is talk to you. You, you have the right idea. This place is wicked. All the way from uh, North to South America, it's what you call Babylon, right? So you do come from the The problem is that, and, and you are right, sometimes you need to speak Sweden. And sometimes it's good to speak roughly we here every Saturday. So sometimes we deal with the psychology, but sometimes you have to deal with it in different ways. Sometimes people need to be provoked. So deal with construction, right? Construction is a violent process. When you deal with construction, you expect to see sawdust and mess, but if you realize that a house is being built, nobody really mourns over the scraps, right? We know it's going to be recycled in some places. That sawdust is going to be used to, to, to form some other type of wood that can be used in other areas of the house. Nobody really mourns it, but when you look at a society like this one, uh, you know, at face value, you think that words like these are going to lead so many people to run away, right? And that's a scary thought. 
The Bible says that only one third of our people are going to make it out of this country. Right? And we're still dealing with construction. So all we're doing is violent. And well, at times we're dealing with less, but we're separating the scraps from what's going to go on now. Some of us aren't going to be able to so I appreciate that. I want you to hear this though. Okay. Um, we see Isaiah 30. We see rebellious children. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse 9. That this is a rebellious people. So we deal with a rebellious people. You know, that's how we got here. This one, right? Yeah. Lying children. We're lying children. We lie to each other. We lie to ourselves. So it's important to meet the lies with extreme prejudice. Right? We've been programmed to like masses. It, it, there's no denying that we like masks, whether it's because it's a condition that's been put upon us or not. Sometimes we need to hear this violent because what it does is it shakes you awake sometimes. Like, for example, how did you look at the world before you came into the truth, before you realized you were an Israelite? I, I, I was lost. I, no, I my life has changed in the last eight years when I found it. Like, when I found out everything about this whole, everything. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not even the same. I was engaged back then, and oh, we separated because he didn't understand. Um, he didn't understand the change that we had to make and he was just like you're crazy and I was just like look I don't listen to hip hop there's so much like MK programming there's so many messages that you, you're like taking in that you don't even understand and he didn't understand that so I lost uh, I was engaged and lost mm -hmm. my partner due to me being awakened and him still wanting to be asleep that's a powerful thing what you was know? his nationality African American African American yeah. so you see you probably trying to talk to him delicately and yeah. you probably tried the rough way. Well, I mean, I was rough. I turned stuff off. I turned Jay-Z off. There's so many things I tried to what? do. At first, I was yeah. like, calm, easy, and collective. But when he started calling me crazy for thinking, like, what you guys talk about, that's where I had to be like, okay, well, let's talk about how, how much you're crazy. You're idolizing these people. You're, like, praying. You're, like, on your knees, Probably believing that everything you've been told is true. Um, you know, you don't question anything. So, um... So my whole world has changed, and, and since then I haven't um, even ha had a relationship because, again, I'm working on my temple, I'm working on my mind, I'm working on my spirit. I'm not trying to attract somebody that's still asleep. I need somebody that is awoken and, and like, and, and, and not only wants that information, but wants to do something with it. Because you can have it and just be really dilly, but it, you got to do something with, with the information. So I try to share as much as I possibly can. But I don't know what, you know, like I don't know in depth like you guys do because I'm not in my word like I'm supposed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that's my story. I really appreciate you guys for being out here. You know, I just, when I was down there, I just thought, I just was like, I need to tell them, like, oh, I just, just share that. I don't know if I was in my heart. I try to mind my business and to myself. Yeah. You know? It's your business in a way. You know, like God, He ordained men to go out and teach. But the word resonates with you and you want to do your part. You know what I'm saying? But what it did was, it leads to an open dialogue where we can help you in your spiritual walk. Like, there are things that we can help you to correct so that you are walking uprightly with the most high God. You know, you're just fairly modest. Right? Bridges on me. Bridges. Bridges are like, uh, you see these that we wear? Oh, oh. Okay. The border of blue. So, we yeah. need to get you in some of those. You need to uh, adjust some things. You got you. Like, for example, you're, you're talking about your mate. You know, you guys had to part ways. You tried the soft way and you tried the harsh way. But I kind of wanted to address what you touched on in terms of coming gently. I want you to see now, when you see brothers coming in the fashion that we are, it's what God ordained. Watch this. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 20. Wisdom cried without. She uttered her. Proverbs 2? Oh, 1 and 20. The, the, the previous verse. Let me get a song. Wisdom cried without. She uttered her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates. Uh -huh. In the city she uttered her words, saying, How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? How long will you simple ones love simplicity? But when it says she cries without, I mean, she's hollering from the street corners. So the, the ideology at large when you come to Christianity is that at the end of the tunnel, God wants equality, but the Bible never, ever, ever even alludes to that. So let's read Con, this is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. This is just uh, this is just a prelude to it. If, if you can hear, apply your wisdom, your knowledge, apply your faculties to understand what comes next. Verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. 
in the book of Revelations, in the revealing of Christ, it says, he that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. This is closing the book, right? Go ahead. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. At the end of it all, he that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. Is that is that equality at the end of the tunnel, or is it judgment being dished out? Judgment. Judgment being dished out, right? Now, God doesn't show respect to persons, so he's going to judge you with an equal judgment, but the point is that everybody doesn't have the same judgment at the end. If in the book of Revelation you see people getting a white robe and crowns, you see others getting led into captivity and killed with the sword, that would just automatically lift the, the ideology that brings equality at the end of the tunnel. Would you agree? Watch this. Who's waiting on this? Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. The scriptures say that the saints are the ones that are really waiting on them and that they're the ones that are, that's, that's what their patience is based upon, right? Our patience is based on our faith. Let me get Acts 1 and 6 for you. Watch this. Christ was getting ready to leave and go sit on the right hand of the Father. This is what the people that were following him and the apostles were looking forward to was him that led into captivity to go into captivity, right? This is called salvation. This is why I know what salvation is and who it's for. Go ahead. This is the book. It's a box. This is the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 6. When they when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Did you hear that? Did you will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Why would the Jews be looking forward to that? Like with everything Christ taught leading up to his ascension, why is that your last question? Why do you I'm going to tell you why. According to eschatology, Christ, he would die for the sins of the Israelites. Also, according to eschatology, he would have to die and come back. Right? So he died and he came back. Now is the time for us to get about the money of this captivity. So this is what the Israelites during that time, the ones who were close at hand to Christ's teachings and having the best understanding of the things that he was teaching, this is what they were looking forward to. How come we're not looking forward to the same things? Think maybe that they were hating the rebel and assuming that that's what he came to do. Let's see what his response is and see if, if we're incorrect in assuming this one. Verse 7 And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the season. So he's not saying, he says, It's not for you to know when that's going to happen. He's not saying you're incorrect or even thinking that this is going to occur. He's saying that it, it's not for you to know when, right? We're going to find out is that Christ still had another fault, right? They were sitting here in what's called partial, according to the Bible, and according to some encyclopedias, right? But the saints, what this is proving is that the saints are the Israelites. They are the ones waiting for him that led in the captivity to go into captivity. Let me get Psalms 147 and 19. Psalms 147 and 19 and 20. Hey, I'm sorry. I do got a time crunch, but hey, it was really nice talking. All right, just want you to know, the Blacks, Hispanics, and the Native Americans, all the Israelites that the Bible speaks of, and God sending his son to deliver them, right, at the expense of all the white nations and all the nations that have been putting them in captivity or not taking up arms to deliver them from the nation, right? So as a Christian or as a believer in this Bible, it's your responsibility to let the Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans know, but also let your fellow white men know that their time is up and the Most High is going to lead them into captivity and kill them with the sword. You know, you got time to come back so you can learn what that looks like in the Bible. Right? Okay. Right. 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 The Most High God says, don't trust your enemy. Well, what do we do? We trust in our enemy. It says, even though he goes down into a, a what appears to be a fetal or docile position, don't trust him because he's going to bounce on your ass. Isn't that what he did? Isn't that what led to our destruction? It says, don't hate your neighbor. But what do we do? We hated our neighbor. And then what? Now we off in slavery. Now we killing each other for them. How you doing, brothers? Good to see you. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. 
because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded to, thee, to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. You going to that church and you thinking I'm always there, I'm always in the front seat, I always got this big ass hat on, I always put the most money in the collection plate. Why ain't God blessing me? Why ain't getting my increase? It's because the Bible don't tell you to do all that. He tells you to keep the commandments that he has given you. And if we would have done that from the beginning, we would have never been removed up out of our land. Right. But now we're waiting to get put back over there and see a promised land. Now we're in confusion. Now we're worshiping wood and stone. And we wonder why we put these idols around our neck all the way from Jesus to Buddha to Tupac. And we wonder why we can't see no equality, no salvation, no mercy at the hands of these oppressors. It's because it's a curse. And it's because we didn't keep the commandments of the Most High God. How hard is it not to fuck on your neighbor's wife? Right. Huh? How hard is it not to rob your neighbor? Not to cover these things. How hard is it not to, to uh, disrespect your parents and to look after them? How hard is it not to join hands with the same people that's been seeking to destroy you for the past 500 years? Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. The only good thing about these curses is that they are upon us for a sign so that we can identify one another in these last days. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans fit these signs better than anybody else. These signs are upon you. The things happening to your children, the fact that this devil, devil is able to hide thousands of bodies under this soil. Oh, baby. And lie in your face and tell you that he loves you and that we all eat. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. You ain't glad to not fuck on your neighbor's wife. You ain't glad to not covet his things and seek to rob him because you're jealous. You're not glad to do that. The most high God look at you like you evil. And this is why our minds need to be converted in these last days. This is why we need to look at what the white man has told us, the way things should be. Dealing with them cowboy movies you were subjected to when there wasn't no positive black roles on TV. Not like there, there are today or anything like that. But he told you this way of life was true. The nations round about you taught you that that way was true. But the Most High God told us differently. He told us that this, this book would hold the wisdom that the rest of the nations would look at us and respect us for. But we make them look stupid. We seek to be like them when we got the most powerful being to ever exist outside of it, behind us. But he looks at us and he says, you're going to be cursed. You're not going to be able to escape these curses and they're going to be a party for a sign and a wonder in front of all of the same people that you left him for. Verse 49, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. He brought a nation against us from far. How fast is that nation swoop down on his people? From the end of the earth. As swift as the eagle flying, uh -huh. a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance. Of what? A nation of fierce countenance. They would they would put these schools together, and they would cause Native American children to drop their heritage all the way down to their language. That's right. And beat them if they refused to do so, not showing respect to the young. And he damn sure wasn't showing respect to the old. But he was killing them all if they sought to protect their young, right? But we still think that this same person, we think that he has now changed. Somehow, somehow this place is actually civilized. And somehow this man has been touched by God. And somehow now he gives a damn. He didn't give all his power by giving a damn. He got all his power by killing with the sword and subduing nations with the sword. And that's how he maintains his power. Right? He sucks the life out of everything. You blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans want to come back to life. You got to let go of his hand and take the hand of the Most High God. That's what we're here to tell you. Verse 50. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Not, not only at face value, do we not respect the, the faces of the young and the old, but then after they've done all the killing, they make every justification for it. That's why when they gun little black boys down in the street and kill little Hispanic boys in the street, what do they say? They bring up their rap scene. That's right. They talk about how they rap. Right. Or how they lived in a dangerous neighborhood. They right. try to dehumanize you at every turn. That's how fierce their countenance is. 
because they're going to humanize you to justify the wickedness that they do to you like you some animal but when you deal with the animals there's something called animal abuse and they all for they all for watching out for and protecting the animals so what, sh what that should show you is that they regard you as less than the beast of the field these are curses how are we not cursed verse 51 and he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle he eats the fruit of our cattle what's up yeah what, hold on hold on hold on before you leave what's your nationality on your father's side uh norwegian and uh english i guess what do you appreciate about us about what you said you appreciate me oh just that you're out here spitting facts and have out here with the people so you you are uh saying that they're facts now we're reading out of this bible right you believe in the bible uh, certain parts of it. I'm not, I'm still new to it. Certain parts of it. Let's see if you agree with this part. Let me get Revelation 13 and 9. I want you to tell me what you think it is, right? All right, just tell me what, what you know about the Bible, how that sounds to you. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Uh -huh. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. This is in the last book. How do you feel about this? I mean, if you get, I guess what goes around comes around. Like trying to say. Yeah, that's exactly what it's saying. Now, the Bible says that the Israelites, who does include the Blacks, Hispanics, and the Native Americans, the same people that the white man put into slavery and shipped off to various places in the uh, map, right? They have to go into captivity. Do you? Are you welcoming that judgment upon yourself and the people that you descend from? Well, no, because that's not me. It's not you. Let me get Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14 and 21, the Bible says it is, right? When you deal with God, he deals with generations. So if your grandfathers run out on the tab and they're not able to receive that judgment, that's to come on you, watch that. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 21. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. Now, your belief in the Bible, do you aspire to do good according to the Bible? Course. Would you be a saint if you could be? A saint? Yeah. Like I guess in the family. All right, get Revelations uh, 13 and 9 again, right? Read that part. That I'm gonna read it from the top. Now watch this. You said you aren't cool with this. This is the problem. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So if you were a saint, this is what you would have to be waiting on and looking forward to, which would say that you are not, if, if that's not what you want, you're the wicked that the Bible speaks of. Do you agree with that? I really don't know. You don't know? I'm here to tell you that you are the wicked that the Bible speaks of. And if you really supported us, you would let all your compatriots know that the blacks, Hispanics, and the Native Americans are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of, and that one day you're going to have to serve the same type of captivity that we have to serve. And you're going to have to look and watch with with weakness in your arms and in your knees as your family members get taken into slavery as well. And there's nothing that you can do about it. Let me get Deuteronomy 30 and 7 real quick. See, these are curses from the Most High God that you are allowed to come from a whole nother continent and enslave all of us and do what you would with us. But the Bible says that these curses have to come on you. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 7. And the Lord thy God will put all these curses upon thine enemies. After what? Let me get verse 1. See, it says all these curses have to come on our enemies. That's what Jesus Christ is all about. Did you know that? No, not really. You didn't know that? Let's go into it. Do you believe I'm your enemy? Yes. You have to be, right? No. Let me ask you this. What do you think should be done to the white man for the things that happen to the black man, the Hispanic man, and the Native American man? What do you think should happen for the things that happen to the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man? Do you believe in justice? Yes, yeah. Do you believe in the laws of this country? The laws say that if you take some stolen property, whether you know it or not, you have to either give it back or give it back and go to jail. You pay restitution. Have you paid any restitution? You, have you paid restitution for what happened to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? Yeah. Slavery brought this country trillions of dollars. Millions of dollars were stolen from the indigenous peoples. Millions of dollars worth of gold and silver. You haven't paid none of that back, but you were man of justice. Well, that wasn't me. What do you mean it wasn't you? But you inherited the stolen property. Are you able to live here? So what if somebody kicked you out your house and threw a house party, right? Now the people that received the invite, they don't necessarily know that you kick somebody out, uh, that you got kicked out your house, but they know it's a party. Shouldn't they have to get out? 
so that you can come home to what's rightfully yours. You don't know? So if I stole your hat, would you want it back? What if I gave it to somebody else? Would you want it back from them? Yeah, yeah, you got to get the hell up out of here. Because you know, damn real, you ain't a man of justice. You ain't nothing but the filth of the earth. The Bible calls you the devil. Got us blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we gotta realize those terms might hurt to say because you might have some white friends. All it means is deceiver. So what I would urge you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans to do is ask your white friends some of these same questions to see if they're really your friends. And the answer is going to be, hell no. They don't give a